we are happy to have met together in the presence of the Lord once again this beautiful Lord's Day. We thank God that all of you are safe and are being protected by the power of the name of Jesus. Just let's get ready for the word of God to build us up and to give us hope and faith for living. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory for another wonderful opportunity for us to gather in spirit, though at different places, to worship you together, to pray to you together in spirit, and also to hear your word. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you for your word, which is able to save us and give us hope and give us faith to live our spiritual lives in this life. We are praying that you, you bless your word and break it down to us, to our understanding, so that every one of us shall receive your word and be blessed by it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, the topic is moved by faith and unbelief, but unmoved by the lack of fasting. And our scripture reading is from Mark chapter 2, from verse 18 to 20. Let us all read the word of God. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, how can the guest of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. Amen. Amen. Now, you have to ask for a name for a seed for Ridi Ebuada. Now, Nipa Bibisa no say. Adenti na Yohani esuya for ni for a si for esuya for di ebuada na wesuya for di wo ni ebuada ena Jesus se wonse aye fukunu ene wongo hoyi aye fushia aho huo no betumi edi ebuada ana emredo duo a aye fukun eno wo wonche no di worin tumi ni ebuada. Na nebi beba a wo befa ayefukunu no efri one chain. Anumu na wo be di ebuada. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ reacted to faith and unbelief as well as fasting or no fasting differently. Sanya oyankupa eradi yesu obua mjidie. So hunu mjidie anase hunu anyenia. The Bible tells us that Jesus was always moved when people have had faith or when they didn't have faith. However, However, he was never moved whether somebody fasted or did not fast. For example, when the centurion whose servant was ill and came to Jesus for help, believed that Jesus could just stand where he was and speak to where the servant was 
for the servant to be healed. Jesus was amazed by the faith of the man. He was moved by the man's faith. The man told Jesus, you don't even need to come to my house. I am also a soldier. I understand the principle. I have, I have soldiers under me. When I say to this one, sit here, he sees the one, I say, stand here. So you, Jesus, you don't even need to walk to my house. Just stand here and speak, and my servant will be well. And Jesus was really moved. And this is what Jesus told him. I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That is found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10 to 11. I don't know, uh, Matthew, as I find it, think there was another woman, a Syrophoenician woman, whose daughter was demon possessed. And she heard of the presence of Jesus in a particular house. So she went there to seek help from Jesus. In the first place, the disciples didn't want her to see Jesus. But she persisted. And so, or, or, and Eventually, she saw Jesus and told her and told him her problem. Jesus also didn't give her any proper answer. I said, "What I have I have brought is for the children of God. It's not for the dogs." And, and this woman will not give up, but continue to believe that. The answer to the daughter's problem was with Jesus. And when Jesus saw her faith and her persistence, he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Mark chapter 7, verse 29. There was another woman who had an issue of blood. She had a problem with bleeding for many years. And she heard that Jesus was passing and talked to herself. That if I can only go through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be healed. The woman finally did and touched Jesus. She was healed. And when Jesus turned to ask, somebody touched me. And out of fear, she came and knelt before Jesus. Please, I did that. But when I did, my problem has been solved. Jesus told her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. When his disciples were afraid, one day, when he was with them, in the boat and they were crossing the sea that the storms will overturn their boat and they went to wake him up and ask him to come and help them he marveled at the fact that they didn't believe that that he was with them in the boat and that they could think that the storms could capsize the boat in which Jesus was lying. 
so he marveled at their lack of faith he marveled at their unbelief and asked them in Luke chapter 8 verse 25 where is your faith there was another man who brought his son who was demon possessed to the disciples of Jesus they tried to help this boy but they couldn't cast out the demon because they didn't have faith when Jesus came and he heard the story he was so marveled that the disciples because of their lack of faith couldn't help the little boy the man's father ran to Jesus please your disciples couldn't help can you help and Jesus is saying, if only you can believe. As for me, I can do anything on condition that you believe. Everything is possible for them who believe. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. In his own hometown, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 6, verse 46, Mark was that Jesus was unable to perform any miracles in his hometown. Except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. It is very clear and very evident from all the examples that we have shown that Jesus is moved either by your faith or your unbelief. Faith moves Jesus to act. Unbelief also moves him, but it ties his hands and is unable to act. But whether somebody fasted or he didn't fast did not move Jesus at all. He was in different. Your fasting will not move him. Your lack of fasting will not move him. One day, as we read from the scripture, the disciples of John the Baptist and of the Pharisees came to Jesus and asked, We fast often. How come your disciples don't fast? Jesus was neither moved by the fasting of the Pharisees, disciples, and the disciples of John the Baptist, nor the lack of fasting of his disciples. He was indifferent. In fact, Jesus did not recommend fasting for his disciples as a way to move the hand of God to act on their behalf. In fact, Jesus considered fasting as something for mourners, people who are sad, who have lost something, and they are mourning. But Jesus didn't think that fasting 
which represents mourning, is for the guest at the wedding. With the bridegroom in attendance. We mourn and we fast and we cry at funerals. But we don't mourn and fast and cry and wail at the wedding when the bridegroom is present. So with him as the bridegroom, with his disciples, he didn't think that they should fast. With him as the bridegroom, the disciples were at a wedding feast. At the wedding feast, when there is plenty of food, that is not where we fast. When the bridegroom is present, and there is merry making and jubilation that is not the time for fasting fasting is mourning and mourning is at the funeral and so he told the disciples of John the Baptist and of the Pharisees that you, you can fast because you are mourning. But my disciples are at a wedding. I am the bridegroom. I am with them. They are at a wedding, so there is no need for them to fast. But for as long as I remain with them as the bridegroom, there will be no need for them to fast. It is not their fasting that will move me. But Jesus said something that a day will come when he will be killed, when he will be taken away from them, and they will be sad. And that day they will more, they will fast. Yes, that's yes, you can't say a debit a baby ba uh obey free on ten ye be kunu no free on ten kakra na na so free on ten sabre no sabre na obube ya country no omesh. And that is exactly what happened when Jesus was arrested and he was brutally killed by the Jewish leaders supported by the by the Romans and he was buried for three days. For the three days they mourned. Because they had lost a dear one and they fasted. In Mark chapter 9, in Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 11, the Bible reads 9 to 11. When Jesus rose early, on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. Now, oh, sorry, that I did not trick him and I put you to know. Oh, you know who I did, can it share Maria Magdalene? Ah, oh, two, I will money and so I feel you. Now, so in the three days that Jesus was in the in the tomb, buried in death, the disciples who had been with him, they were weeping and they were mourning. They were at a funeral, not at a wedding. Because the bridegroom had been taken away, so they were not at a wedding. They were not wedding guests. They were at a funeral, so they were mourning and they were crying 
and they did not eat. And the servant did not come where he was. And now he was soon. Now he do try to man the day. I come to him. Jesus actually had prepared them for this. He knew what would happen to them when he was taken away. Um, uh, 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 now Jesus was Jesus about to join him. So he said, "Oh, you must say, say, you funny for your man. You know, near about two months now, now." So in John chapter sixteen, reading from verse six, uh, verse sixteen, twenty to twenty-two. Jesus told the disciples before he died. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. Verse 20. I tell you the truth. You will weep. And mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. <laughs> Mube mube su na mube twa ajo na ewiase ani beje na mode mo wure be ho nanso mo awure ho no be dane anije oba se orewo a ohunu awure ho e fi se ni don edu na se onya ewo oba no a onkai ahohia no biom anije a wanya se wawo onipa aba wiase no enti na monso Say, say, dear, more at the whole na na me who mobium na more a coma, but Tom William na more energy na more na more energy no who be in ye monsem. Amen. So, this is what Jesus told the disciples before he was he was killed. Just an idea, you know, you can't say what trace you have for in a little while you are seeing me. But in a, another little while, you will not see me. I'm telling you the truth that whilst you will be weeping at that time, the world will be rejoicing. You will grieve. You will refuse to eat. You will mourn. But I am telling you that in a little while, your mourning will turn into joy. It will be like a woman in labor. At the time she is in labor, trying to give birth to her son, her child, she will be she 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 is in pain. And she is in anguish. But as soon as the baby is born, she forgets about the pain and the anguish. And she rejoices. Because a child has been born to her. She says that is how it is going to be in your case. You are also going to grieve and mourn and 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 and, and wail. Now more child but in three days I will rise from the dead and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy this is because when I rise from the dead I will die no more I was your bridegroom with you and you were wedding guests at the wedding so there was no need for you to fast and that is why you didn't fast to the extent that the disciples of John the Baptist and the Pharisees came to ask me why you were not doing so but the time came when I died and then you turned to mourning and to fasting and to, and to sackcloth but in just a little while 
I came back from, from the dead. Never to die again. And I am going to live with you as a bridegroom forever. Until the close of the age. This is the situation of the disciples of Jesus. They had the bridegroom and therefore there was no need for them to fast. The bridegroom was taken away and they fasted for a little while. And the bridegroom came back never to die again. And therefore they came back with the bridegroom never to have the need to fast. That is why in the Bible throughout the experiences of the disciples after the resurrection of Jesus, it was just rejoicing, it was just feasting, Whenever Jesus came to them, they were either eating already and he came to join them or he himself arranged for them to have something to eat. Because morning time was over. Wedding time had returned. This is the witness of Peter. In the house of Cornelius when he was there to preach the Gentiles for the first time. In Acts chapter 10. Verse 39 to 42. This is what the scripture says. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Na yemu ebiana nkunu ho. Ede ko na ye ne noma a oyeye no Yuda fo so ni Jerusalem nyina ho adanse fo. Ono nso na wo sene no dua so ekum no. Ono na onyakopon nyane no da a eto so miensa. Na oma no yi ne ho pefe chire. So this is Peter's testimony about Jesus. To Gentiles who had gathered in the house of Cornelius. He was talking about Jesus Christ. That he was preached among the Jews in Jerusalem and in Judea in all the places in Israel. But they killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day. And he caused him to be seen by chosen witnesses. It was not everybody in Israel who saw Jesus when he rose from the dead. But God caused him to be seen by selected people. And Peter is saying that we were also part of those who saw him when he rose from the dead. Because we ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So Peter is testifying to the fact that after Jesus rose from the dead, Fasting had come to an end. The fasting for the short time, for the three days, had ended. It was only eating and drinking with the risen Jesus. Because the bridegroom who was taken away 
has been brought back by God. And if the bridegroom is with you, you don't mourn. You rejoice. You don't fast. You eat. So when the bridegroom is with us as children of God, it is not our fasting or our lack of it that will move him. It is unscriptural to think that your fasting moves God. Jesus is unmoved by your lack of it or your your having it in abundance. He didn't commend the disciples of John the Baptist and of the Pharisees, neither did he condemn his disciples. He didn't commend them for fasting plenty, neither did he condemn his disciples for not fasting at all. He was unmoved by the lack of fasting by his disciples. The only thing that moved him is whether they had faith or whether they didn't have faith. It is not how sad you make your face that will make God respond to you. It is not how much you cried that will make God turn his attention towards you. It is not how much you complain about your sad situation that will let God come to you. In fact, all of them actually represent unbelief. Lack of faith. And your lack of faith will move Jesus anyway, but it will, it is a negative move. It will tie his hands and he will be unable to help you. It is only faith that moves Jesus positively. Throughout the scriptures, people who have expressed faith, Jesus has marveled at their faith and he has gone to their rescue. It is your faith that will move him to come to your aid. Your unbelief too will move him. But in the negative sense, his hands will be tied and he will not be able to come to your aid. As for fasting or the lack of it, forget about it. Jesus is not moved at all. It is not how many days you fast. That will let God come to your aid. And it is not because you haven't fasted that he will refuse to come to your aid. He will not come to your aid because you don't believe. Not because you haven't fasted. And he will come to your aid because you have faith. Not because you have fasted. Many people have fasted and they have had ulcer, but their problems have still not been solved. Some people have even fasted and collapsed and died. Their problems were not solved, they died. It is your faith, not your fasting or the lack of it. May the Lord help all of us to read the scriptures and to believe in what God has said about us and about Himself. 
and about his relationship with us and what he has promised to do for us. Let us stand on his word and always move him by our faith, by our belief in his ability to do what he has said he would do for us. If Jesus has said, that, if the Bible has said that by his blood, your sins are forgiven. All you need to do is to repent and confess your sins. And you have done that. But you still don't believe that your sins are forgiven. Then your sins are going to stay. Because of your unbelief, God will not be able to help you. His hands, the mighty God's hands will be tied when it comes to you. But when you believe, he marvels and he rushes to come to your aid. May the Lord help us to believe in the Lord. To believe in what he has said to believe in his promises stand on them and go to him on the basis of what he has said without wavering but steadfast in faith and our Lord will be moved to come to our rescue Amen. Amen let us pray Heavenly Father we give you all the glory that you are a good God who is willing to give all the things that we need for us. You don't want us to fast and cry and suffer before you give them to us. And you don't also want us to doubt your ability to help us or that you expect from us is to believe in you is to trust your words is to trust your promises this and nothing else is what you require from us when we come to you for help for the brief upon us and the little faith that we have let us not hide it let us always apply it let us always stretch our faith for your word says that if our faith is as little as the mustard seed and we sow it it is able to move mountains help us not to be doubting Christians, unbelieving people of God who, who depend on works and not faith, who depend on what we are able to do, such as fasting. But those who depend on the finished work of Jesus for the supply of all that we need from our God, let us be such disciples of Jesus. The disciples never fasted. But whenever they had faith, they did exploits for God. Let us be like the 12 disciples who don't depend on fasting, but who depend on faith in our work with the Lord, in the work that he wants us to do for him, and in, 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 in our prayers when we need help from him. Amen. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. And now, may the God of peace himself give you peace in every way and at all times. The Lord be with you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, Lord. the love of God, Amen. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit mm. be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.